Hey everybody, welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am your host Jinx and we are, as always, joined by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. A um, couple of important uh, governance things that we're going to be going over today. Um, one of which is uh, the feature of this call. The other one, uh, the Blockworks proposal is up for a vote now. Go ahead and take a look at that and, and make sure that uh, you get your votes in. Um, <clears throat> I know there's some questions uh, about like size and reach and cost and <clears throat> excuse me all of the rest of that um so uh let's let's make sure we get those things handled quickly since it is already live for voting uh before we get into the main governance topic of uh, the call um zach do we have any broad uh community updates that you want to include um, from the foundation, I mean, just a couple of, I, I think you're going to talk about them later. The big ones are, you know, there's a conversation around AI that is happening, and I saw there was a bunch of activity this morning. Um, so make sure to tune into that. I realize, um, and ads has been very on top of this. We realize that we're about a week out from the call, and we want to have something um, for people to dive into. Um, and so if that's not out already this morning, um, it'll be out very soon. Um, just to keep this conversation going. And there is a, another discussion channel um, in the Discord for that as well. I think we're going to talk about the Tier 1, um, the tier one funding for uh, the Tier 1 listing for the market maker. Um, so I think that'll come up shortly. I'm trying to think other things. We have a builder's call tomorrow. Um, so again, Shane's going to lead that one. Excited to see what he has in store. I think that's the majority of the updates today. Perfect. And uh, Shane, any uh, technology protocol level updates you want to put out? Yeah. Uh, really, uh, uh, Private Testnet was launched. Um, so it was launched, and uh, uh, there, the team's already been uh, testing some uh, claim and proofs and things of that nature. So, uh, yeah, things basically continue. Um, the kind of the next focus is onboarding uh more uh external contributors uh in in very specific uh areas so like the testnet team uh that currently maintains morse is uh 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 they're they they've already started uh deploying nodes so now we have outside folks deploying a few nodes uh we also have um uh well they're also working towards uh deploy, uh deploying suppliers for the first time uh mm -hmm. and again this is all just very iterative it's um you know so uh the right now the team isn't looking to work with uh you know uh work with everyone which is why it's kind of a, a private test net so we can get very specific on on what they're testing but um uh, anyways uh definitely cool progress happening on that front um yeah really the next uh uh the next uh sprint right now is now that private test net is launched start uh, locking down all the essential features uh, that are required so that we could uh, get all actors operating on the testnet, uh, which then transitions us to being able to uh, uh, do the public testnet. So, yeah, that's pretty much where we're at right now. Beautiful. And uh, Fred, y'all have any uh, gateway updates that you want to get out there? Uh, no major updates right now. Um, I think people will be happy with how we're going to start handling batching in the near future. And uh, we are still desperately seeking a somebody with ZK Sync. So if you have a node, give me a call. We'll, uh, we'll make sure you're compensated and we'll go live. Beautiful. Well, in that case, uh, Zach, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you and uh, let you lead into the main governance topic of the day. Flash. Flash. Do I hear you? OK. 
Can anybody else hear? Am I just missing you? I mean, I don't hear anything. I'm not sure. Yep, dead silent. Okay, cool. Zach, are you with us? Sorry, I'm here. I missed the prompt. I was fixing the video recording. Can you say it again? Yeah, so uh, we're ready to talk about the uh, the liquidity uh, proposal. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I think most of you have seen the the post in the forum. Um, I also just put it in the chat. I'll. Um, it's the become a tier one uh, project liquidity. Um, I just want to give an open floor here for anybody who has any questions about it or concerns. Um, the the TLDR on it is we want to pull. Um, funds from the DAO to give to the market maker so that way we can get the liquidity that we'll need in order to be on a tier one exchange. Um, from what I understand, this is a necessity. Um, we are unlikely to make a tier one exchange without this liquidity depth. And so um, if this gets voted down, we'll have to figure out some creative ways of getting to the point we need to be in order to be on a um, a Coinbase or a Kraken or one of them. So kind of an open floor here. If anybody has any questions, we can answer those. If anybody is thinking about voting no for it, I'd love to hear why. So we can make sure we give a good response to that. I'm going to just take a beat here for questions. Could you quickly explain it one more time? Explain the entire proposal? I'm going to give you the, the TLDR, which is essentially we need to pull. Um, let me grab the exact numbers out of the forum post, but we need to pull uh, a large amount of liquidity down to give to a new market maker. The one we're currently using um, we will we'll probably find new ones that are going to do a better job of it. Um, let me pull the numbers here. Or if you have them off the top of your head, Jinx, feel free to throw them out. Let's see here. So yeah, we're looking for about 3 million in pocket to get a 2% depth um, across all the current centralized exchanges. Um, the three million in pocket, I guess, would fluctuate depending on the time of when we pull it out. Um, I think that number has to be converted to basically USD um, to do the the market depth. There's some dissenting opinions in here that might we might have to address, which is like, you know, is it too much? Um, we should spend less pocket. We should use our own budget. Those are in the proposal here. And again, I'll link to this in the forum. Do you want a, a more in-depth overview, Harry, or are you looking for specifics? No, that was fine. Thank you. Okay. Well, in general, it seems like people are in agreement that we need to approve it. So I did just want to make a big note that you know, we will be pulling a large amount of funds from the, the Dow Treasury in order to do this. Um, I think the plan is, per Dermot's messages, that we want to um, find multiple market makers uh, in order to do this. And we'll be able to pick, hopefully from a batch of them, on which ones we think will do the best job. Um, and we'll move forward from there. So it, we'll make a post later today to push it to um, vote. Seems like nobody has any strong opinions, so I'll call that a success. Back to you, James. Okay, well, I thought there'd be more uh, questions or thoughts about that, but uh, that vote is going live this afternoon, correct? 
Uh, it's going to go live on Dermot's. I don't have a... Um, I think Dermot or Jack will put up the proposal, so it's a little late for him, but my guess would be within the next 24 hours, so later today or early tomorrow. Okay, cool. Well, if there's no other thoughts on that, then we are uh, uh, into the open portion. So anybody have any other uh, topics or ideas or things that they want to discuss? I saw that the uh, AI conversation has been ongoing and that there's uh, more uh, comments in the uh, uh, forum post about that as well. Is Steve on this call? No, I don't think so. Might have been good to get his insight, but uh, Ramiro, do you have any uh, additional context you'd like to add to the conversations that have occurred so far? Um, not really. I think that Steve's input was really good. It was on spot and many stuff, but it would be great to have him saying his mind on this call. But nothing new from my side. Uh, we'll have to put him in a headlock and drag him in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, which okay. proposal was this you mentioned, Jinx? Say again. What proposal did you uh, mention? The topic? Uh, the, or the, not the proposal so much as uh, the topic around uh, AI usage. I think it's called uh, AI First Principles. If you uh, sort topics by, uh, or sort the forum by uh, last topic uh, reply, you'll see that it's in the the first couple, I think. Okay. I dropped it into chat as well. And of course, if you have any thoughts or uh, comments that you want to uh, add, but you're not capable of uh, participating in the voice chat, feel free to type them into the uh, sidebar chat there. I see Mr. Rasmussen is adding his thoughts. Uh, he said, assuming approval of uh, the money maker loan or market maker loan, what is the time frame to listing? Um, to clarify, John, you mean uh, um, getting a tier one listing or how quickly will they be deploying that capital? Tier one listing. Yeah, I think that's a question that's on a lot of our minds. Mm -hmm. um, Zach, do you have any further insight on that? I know it's been sort of an evolving conversation. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's the same thing that we've been saying, which is around the Shannon launch is when we will do the big push for a tier one listing. Um, it makes the most sense. We'll have a big push for it. The market maker will have been running for some time at that point. Um, and we'll have a really good... I think we'll have a really good opportunity at that point to get the tier one listing. Should we so expect if I, that, that everything's going to be post Shannon at this point? I mean, post Shannon seems like a very, yeah, it seems like a good benchmark for a lot of stuff. I mean, honestly, I would hope that it would come uh, in conjunction with either Shannon prep, you know, so let's just say Shannon launches in, um, in Q2 or end of Q2, Q3, whatever it's going to be we would then have the 
um, the tier one listing ready to go as we're basically making the upgrade. So I'm just going to like roughly say like, let's say we think it's going to be June. Ideally, we'd have that tier one listing the same month. Got it. Okay. And Shane, do we have an updated or projected proposed launch date for Shannon yet? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, you know, I, I guess the internal, really at the start of the year, the internal uh, hope was uh, Q3 um, or like Q2, Q3. So uh, from from when I kind of started working with the team and everything like that uh, in January, uh, that was the uh, expected was either Q2, Q3, just depending on, uh, you know, how things go. So uh, right now, um, you know, it's it's progressing along. Uh, you know, there was, uh, in all honesty, there was a uh, there there was time that had to go into uh, doing the Cosmos migration that wasn't uh, that wasn't expected. Um, but, you know, that's just kind of part of working on a uh, platform like Cosmos is, uh, you know, when they when they do upgrades, obviously you're going to have to do upgrades as well. And uh, the protocol team wanted to be operating on the latest, greatest uh, version of um, Cosmos, especially because uh, the newest version changed how they did modules, which is entirely what, uh, you know, the, the Cosmos SDK is, is it's a modular system and, and uh, Shannon relies entirely on these modules. So anywho, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, start of the year, yeah, the, the goal was, you know, kind of Q2, Q3. Uh, we probably got a, maybe like two uh, two weeks, probably went, went back like an iteration uh, from uh, the Cosmos upgrade. Um, but uh, at least right now, things are still moving forward. So, yeah, I, I don't think anyone on the team is committing to any specific time just because working with the cosmos sdk that that they've been working with uh before i even joined it it's been a very short amount of time before everything was building everything from scratch uh as uh uh you know through uh hot pocket and stuff like that so that was like building a blockchain entirely from scratch to building it on the cosmos sdk so if you look at it in 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 that terms uh from the cos kind of the start of the cosmos work yeah, uh, it, it started late last year and then uh, is currently going, uh, you know, currently moving on right now. So with testnet out, that's a huge uh, that's a huge benefit. I think once we get to public testnet, which is what we're wanting at the end of uh, near the end of April, uh, once we get to that public testnet, um, that's where I feel like we're going to be able to start getting an idea on, OK, this is how much we still need to work out. And uh, this is how much we need to uh, still play with the testnet to fully make sure everything's working before we can launch testnet. And I think we'll be able to come up with a pretty good idea of where that is. Um, but at least right now, with like talking with partners and talking with uh, folks, you know, we're not getting any hard hard days. Um, so with exchanges, uh, you know, we wouldn't want to give them hard days on on anything, uh, you know, until we're 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 confident and so i think once we get to the public test net that's when we're going to start be able to give real confident like this is how long the public test net will go until we uh can launch shannon um and we'll also have very specific uh things that we need to tackle in the uh in the public test net so in the private one we're just kind of like testing a lot of the core mechanisms um but then in the public test net is where things like uh you know testing new um you're tweaking like tokenomics models, right? To account for, uh, to make sure there's not gaming, to make sure that we can have trustless, uh, or, or permissionless, I should say, we can have permissionless uh, gateways and uh, applications. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of testing that needs to go into that. And we'll just have to kind of gauge once we have all the core mechanics uh, for the protocol itself down, working out those kind of things, uh, you know, is probably gonna be the next big, big challenge in the public test net. Okay, so for clarification here, because I want to make sure that we're all on the same page, you're looking at six weeks in private testnet? So, uh, I mean, right now, uh, the goal is anywhere from four to six weeks. So uh, the goal is four to six weeks uh, for the private testnet because we're... So from the development side, everything's been inside of, you know, a, a closed system. Now we're starting to introduce more partners. Uh, 
uh, that are testing like deployment tools uh, and they're starting to uh, like, again, we're, we're, we're getting to the point where we're going to start on suppliers, right? Uh, to actually start sending relays to the network uh, in a, you know, in a private test net fashion. So, you know, that kind of, uh, you know, that's, that's just basically the, the next step. And after that, it's onboarding kind of gateways or portals to start testing that kind of stuff out. And then all this stuff has to be verified. Um, we're also still working with uh, the auditors, um, which have come back positively, but, um, you know, we're still working with them on things as well. So there's likely uh, things are going to have to change because uh, what, what's important to understand the difference between the private test net and the public test net is the private test net will likely change a lot because uh, every, so there will be a lot of uh, redeployments of it. Um, while when we get to the, the, the public test net, that's where we don't want to have to, you know, redeploy because, oh, you know, we need to do this uh, little optimization to claims here, right? Because then the whole network has to, to shift. So sure. right now it's about doing, you know, having a small group so that we can make those quick changes and make those quick shifts uh, to account for, you know, upgrades that's, that need to happen. Uh, and then once we get to the public, that's where things start to stabilize where we have all the core mechanics down, we've tested you know, everything to the point that uh, we're confident with how the, the base of it works. And then we can start you know, manipulating parameters and things of that nature in a public kind of testnet environment with more participants uh, in it. So that's kind of the, the idea. So yes, maybe four to six weeks on the, hey, we gotta you know, do all these quick forks to, uh, or, or you know, consensus breaking, uh changes to you know iterate quickly um yeah it might be uh four to six weeks is it yeah. safe to assume that within the next couple of weeks existing ecosystem participants might be able to start poking around in the private test map? actually um that's actually something uh we're starting to do this week in terms of like i said where you already have a few people running nodes uh, we also uh, have uh, open source explorers um, run by Ian and uh, um, uh, Ian and Q Spider uh, currently working. Uh, and actually, just yesterday, I talked with the team about uh, talking with some more explorers to to get them to at least be able to start reading data from the public testnet. Because um, one of my goals is to get the public testnet to a point. Uh, or the sorry, the private testnet. Get the private testnet to a point to where you know we can have ads, we could have uh, pocket news, we could have anyone start sharing milestones. You know, like when the the first supplier uh, stakes on a network, right? Have a have an explorer that can share that uh, immediately. Um, you know, right now the idea is uh, because the Cosmos SDK uh, already has a lot of really cool explorers. Um, we're working with. Uh, uh, using existing Cosmos SDK SDK explorers that don't have to be built from scratch, but can literally be plugged in. So we have explorers that were literally plugged in in uh, you know the matter of just deploying and, and doing some configuration files. And so right now we're cleaning things up and trying to get things organized, but then yeah, we're gonna have these kind of early explorers that will have all this, uh, uh, all this data. And when, uh, uh, you know, when there needs to be a consensus breaking change, um, yeah, they can just easily update to the new network. And yeah, I think we can get a lot of cool little marketing, uh, you know, marketing things out of this because these are legitimate milestones that we're going to be hitting and we're going to be able to show it. Uh, but include, but in terms of including other explorers, yeah, uh, the great thing is, is this is all the Cosmos SDK. So um, other, you know, closed source explorers like PocketScan could start creating their own, uh, uh, you know, way to read it. And uh, like I said just yesterday, Talked about uh, talked about it with the team, and um, yeah, we're open to letting other people read the chain, uh, and then down the road provide support for uh, explorers um, directly from the protocol team. But at least for now, uh, you know they don't want to be bogged down or adding a lot of uh, uh, people poking around in a way that holds back the quick iterations that they need to be developing with to get the public test net. So. Uh, I'm kind of a bit of a buffer, if you will, between making sure that um, we're getting people onboarded, but not in a way that prevents them from doing quick iterations 
to moving forward to get to the public test net. Yeah, uh, and and I, you know, I'm I'm really just speaking from the perspective of of someone who who wants to build on Shannon, um, and having some some good understandings of the architecture and what's possible in there. And I'm sure that most of the node runners as well, you know, are are eager to have a sense of of what's going to be required from a uh, a change to structure, a change to architecture, that sort of thing. Uh, and I'm glad that uh, Olshansky uh, in the chat brought up the presentation from January of this year, um, especially in, in the question of to what degree things have fallen behind versus stayed on track. We started off when we first started talking about Shannon early last year um, with an expectation of, you know, maybe Q1 or Q2. Um, clearly, we're moving behind that to some degree. Um, given the importance of a tier one listing to the total economy and, and some of the issues that we've had uh, with the economy over the last year and a half, um, Zach, is there a, a drop dead date that we don't go past if, if V1 is being delayed when it comes to getting a tier one listing or are you finding that tier one exchanges aren't willing to list pocket in its current native form until that change has occurred? Um, I don't think there's a drop dead date. I think right now we are aligned. It seems to be on track for delivery of Shannon and that gives us the time we need to get there. I would say that if something was to seriously change, um, you know, that's probably when we would reevaluate it. So, um, I would totally be speaking out of turn if I said I had like a great answer for this because we haven't actually thought through like what if this gets delayed to like Q4 or something. But I can tell you that um, I'll have a conversation with Dermot and the team um, and we'll post in the forum an update of like, I guess to say if other things were to change with our current um, assessment of where Shannon will be, like what will we do to address that? Because I, I hear your point here, which is, I think the thing that's smuggled under this is like, yo, we think we're probably hitting some sort of bull market this year and we want to be in a good place for this. Is that the underlying question, Jinx? Uh, I mean, that's the positive way to frame it. The okay. negative way to frame it is, holy shit, if we don't get a tier one listing in a reasonable time frame, we're going to have investors pass us by because they can't get deep liquidity. Totally get it. Yeah. yeah so let me Jinx. oh, go for it, Olshansky. Yeah, let me just jump in. So the questions you're asking around timelines and everything else and how much things are falling behind. Great question. Probably only the best, uh, the best leaders in the world can answer this like across the entire world. And I would say looking at what we posted on Jan 17th around getting a private session in February, and it is now mid March. And we literally last week and this week are onboarding the private test net, not having accounted for the fact that the Cosmos 0 0.5 migration will take, uh, one month, i.e. an iteration that was extended by two weeks, I think that speaks to our ability to execute. So in terms of a drop that, uh, drop that date, uh, we're not going to get that answer today. Uh, but the answer that you are going to get is the fact that we are killing it and we're going to keep killing it. And the only way we can do this is with the support from the community. So let's just keep going um, and kind of keep executing and building. The... Other thing I'll add around wanting to get your hands dirty and build and everything else. We already know all the questions. Well, we already know uh, as, at least a small fraction of the questions we're going to get the moment we open up the gates, right? We'll be like, how do you execute? Where is the command? Where are the boxes? this? We know those questions. We're trying to get ahead of those questions before we get into the questions that we don't know yet. Uh, with that said, we're 100% open source, 100% developing in public. So for anyone who is curious and willing to waste hours, you know, on end going down docs that have not been officially gotten the stamp of approval of saying, go and try this out, go to dev.pocketroll.com, look at the config. There's a quick start guide. The only thing is if you ask questions about it, we're not going to be answering those questions until we officially say public testnet is open, right? Because it's going to slow us down from this execution that I just referred to a moment ago with regard to only being a month behind when a one month hurdle came along. I'm going to pause there, but hopefully that kind of gives a big picture of where we are 
how well we're doing and where we're heading. Sure. Yeah, and, and I'm by by no means uh, denigrating the production speed or anything else. Just looking at a you know strategy and planning, especially from the economics perspective, um, when we we know how critical the the exchange listings are. I think the real question is, you know, is the exchange listing, it is Shannon a blocker to exchange listings? Should it, you know, go long for whatever reason? If there's some major issue with Cosmos and that's going to back it up, you know, two, three months, um, are we are we still going to wait for that or are we going to push to have the the current native L1 listed? And Jinx, I, I think I can say that like as of right now, um, Olshansky, like you were saying, it, it sounds like maybe we're a month behind or so. Um, I don't think that changes anything material for the tier one listing if we go from, let's say, early June to early July. Um, and it honestly, it could be better with other things going on. But I'll just say that, like, I'll get an official answer um, after talking to Ads and Dermot. Um, I know they've thought about this already. And just trust me when I say that, like, tier one listing is a high priority for us. We realize that the implications of not being able to access centralized exchanges in places like the U.S. is um, a barrier for a lot of people. So let me let me get you an update in like the next 24 hours and we'll put it on the forum. But I would say that we're still aiming for early summer to get this tier one exchange. And if that moves materially, we will address that. Beautiful. Thanks. It's one of the most common questions that we get uh, in in our unofficial community channels. So. Uh, nice to have some sort of definitive answer for it. Yeah, happy to be as definitive as I can be. <laughs> Let's see, uh, Balut is typing. Shipping good code more so in a trustless decentralized environment is hard, even harder if it's a complex product like Pocket with a lot of actors and tokenomics lovers. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, these questions are not in, in any way a, a negative view of... Uh, the development and engineering work being done. I think everybody understands the complexity of this. And especially for, for token holders and stakers, um, we'd probably rather it take longer than expected than have a launch go live and something go terribly, terribly wrong. So <laughs> believe me when I say uh, it's not about the engineering side at all, as much as it is about understanding and planning for the economic impact uh, and, and what timelines that's occurring along. Also wanted to mention that, um, you know, one of the things that I'm doing for the protocol team is is helping uh, bring in outside contributors at the right time. Uh, and again, I'm working with them very closely to make sure that, you know, we're uh, we're bringing in contributors at the right time uh, and in the right manner that doesn't uh, hold back uh, this timeline. So, uh, you know, so one of those things where if, if you know, I, I do get a lot of people asking, hey, can I be a part yet? Is there something we can do yet? And right now it's been, hey, uh, uh, for, for most for most people right now, it's been a, hey, not quite yet. But uh, for, you know, in some cases where it makes sense to have uh, a few outside contributors uh, helping with, uh, you know, testing, that's where we've been focused. So feel free, anyone that, you know, specifically wants to get involved in any particular way, it, yeah, just reach out to me. Just reach out to me, let me know. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're just kind of playing things by ear and so far we've been seeing good pro progress with onboarding people at the right time in a way that doesn't, uh, slow anything down. So we want to keep that same strategy going, but absolutely reach out, happy to talk to folks, happy to get people, uh, to kind of know what people's interests are. And then I can start plugging people in at the appropriate times. Some, uh, for some folks it might work to participate in the private test net for others it might be best uh, to start with the public test net. So uh, yeah, that's kind of my role. So just feel free to reach out. I saw that there was a, and I'm, you know, I'm a total like snooper on all the uh, the GitHub uh, issues and such. Um, I saw that there was one for uh, documentation around uh, setting up a node in V1. Um, I have not seen one yet for API structure uh, in V1. Is did I just miss that, or is that something that's on the list still to to start chewing on? Uh, actually, uh, yeah, some of the API uh, 
yeah, uh, so the API stuff, I believe there is, actually, I was just talking to them, uh, the protocol team yesterday. So there is some information about some of the APIs, but I don't know if it's all been fully fleshed out yet. So uh, yeah, that that's one of those things where right now kind of one of the, you know, one of the initial things we needed to do was, uh, you know, have deployment. So kind of as the first step, we can start getting uh, uh, suppliers uh, or at least node runners first, uh, you know, other people running node just to make sure that everything's working, uh, which we've we've done. Now we're focused on the suppliers uh, in terms of kind of the larger, uh, you know, the larger like API uh, list of all the different commands inside of uh, Shannon that hasn't been officially released that I know of yet. Um, uh, so, yeah, so to answer your question, I'm not entirely no, or I, I don't entirely think that list has been fully built and compiled yet. Gotcha. I know for, for some of us, we don't necessarily need like full access to uh, our running Shannon node or anything. Um, something equivalent to like, you know, a swagger for the available uh, methods and such would would suffice for our usage. Yeah, uh, one thing, um, you know, uh, one thing that Oshansky did point to is he did point to the dev, uh, dev dot pockworld.com. Uh, that's essentially the early version of Shannon Docs that's constantly being updated and constantly being um, nice, yeah. changed. So in there, you'll find a lot of stuff. And he specifically linked to a lot of the configs, right? A lot of the configs, which, you know, uh, yeah, uh, provide a lot of information for the different, uh, you know, different parts of the ecosystem. So anyways, that's, that's something there uh, in terms of getting kind of that, you know, like you said, the swagger file, kind of the, the master, you know, API list of, of of things on how to, you know, interact with the node and things of that nature. Uh, I don't know if that's in there yet, um, but uh, yeah, uh, part part of it also, um, you know, we are compatible with the Cosmos SDK. So that's why you could literally take an endpoint with one of these Cosmos explorers and it just automatically sorted everything out. So uh, yeah, so really when you're dealing with the Cosmos SDK, um, most of this, uh, most of it, obviously, would just work right out of the box. So if you really want to know, like, okay, how do you get block height or something like that, uh, you just look at the Cosmos SDK. You don't have to look at something pocket specific. Beautiful, yeah. And and uh, this these configs, I mean, they're they're certainly a good start. So appreciate that. All right. Any other questions about all of that? We covered a lot in the call today, so I want to make sure that we've uh, addressed any questions as needed. Okay, well, it seems like uh, we've beat up on that pretty good. We are coming up near the top of the hour. Does anybody have uh, any other different topics or questions they'd like to bring up in the last couple minutes we have? take that as a no. All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming out as always to our weekly calls. We'll see you again next week, same time, same channel. And uh, sayonara. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jinx. Thanks, everybody.